Does anyone remember back in December of last year when everyone was riding the Ganondorf hype train? You know, when people thought Ganon was one of the best heavies? When Nairo reverse 3 0 light? When Nairo was winning money matches with the King of Darkness on stream? Okay, that, that, that still happens. But what we're saying is times have changed. Over the first year of Ultimate, the Calamity has calmed right down and Ganondorf's dropped right down a lot of tier lists. The best way to see the drop in the Ganon stock is to look at an aggregation of pro tier lists. Fortunately, Smash player Inktivate has been aggregating tier lists since the start of the game. In the super early meta, Ganon got ranked pretty low, which made sense given that his character has been pretty bad in Smash. A half a year or so later, and Ganon got a bit of hype. He was still mid-tier, but doing better than every super heavy other than Bowser. And now we're here. Ganon's under just about every heavy in the game, and an inch away from the lowest tier. But even though Ganon's getting no love from the tier list, he's still getting love in tournaments. In fact, he's got a nearly 52% win rate, and the 17th highest win rate in the game. We know, that doesn't sound like much, but listen. In a game with over 70 characters, 17th actually isn't bad. I mean, let's be honest, most people aren't getting better than 17th at a tournament with 70 plus entrants. And if you're looking to crack that top 16 with your local, or just beat up on your friends, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. We've got a lot more great learning tools on the website, including courses from the Summit Champ MKLeo, live coaching sessions from Smash Veterans, and a continually building archive of character videos. Now, let's get back to this character video. So, if Ganon's falling low on so many tier lists, why is he still winning more than characters like Inkling, Mario, Rob, and Bowser? Well, we've got some good answers to that question. And unlike with Duck Hunt and Wario, the answer's not good players plus low play rate. But before we get into it, you gotta know where we're getting our data from. We pull from a site called SSB World that builds win rate data off of their tournament VOD archive. SSB World's data isn't perfect, but it's probably the most complete data we have. So we don't take the data as law or use it for our tier list, but we do think they're a pretty good way to get a quick, generally accurate read on win rates. Alright, now let's get straight into it. We found three big reasons why Ganondorf wins more than you'd think. One, his hard punish playstyle. Two, his skill check weaknesses. And three, the early meta. And none of these reasons are digs at the Dark Lord. If you've watched our 5.0 tier list videos, you know that we're not that down on the dwarf, and we've put him in C tier. We think he's high risk and high reward, and we all know that everybody loves to see this King conquer a set. But Ganon is basically the quintessential heavy, and in Smash, heavies tend to get better the lower the level of play, and worse, the higher level of play. And that leads us into our first point. See, Ganondorf may not be the king of Hyrule, but he's the king of the hard read and the hard punish. The thing about a hard read or hard punish is they get even harder as the skill of the opponent gets higher. However, the logic applies the opposite way too, meaning that at lower levels, you can get hard reads consistently. Basically, Ganondorf gets better the worse the opponent is. For example, a low level player will tend to roll more. Ganondorf can hard read or roll with an up smash and take a stock way earlier than he was supposed to. The sudden stock deficit is also more likely to tilt a newer, more inexperienced player and make them play more aggressively than they should. Ganondorf likes to get in close range and box opponents, so that just leads to more easy kills for the Ganon main. Ganon's kit is built to capitalize off of reads too. That makes him really good against bad to alright players, but pretty bad against good to top level players. For example, take Ganondorf's side special. Ganon's side special is a slow command grab that puts opponents in a tech chase scenario. The timing to tech Ganon's choke slam is pretty tight, so right off the bat it's a lot more punishing to new players who don't know the matchup. Once grounded, Ganon gets a chance to read the opponent's option and punish accordingly. Ganon mains can use this move to basically bully new players out of their entrance fee money. For example, take a look at Bloody Knight, a prominent Ganon main fighting an inexperienced player at a local in a pools matchup. Bloody Knight lands a tricky command grab from the air, and then reads three rolls in a row for three more grabs. New players aren't practiced at mixing up their defensive options and will default to rolls, making them easy to read. Against a strong player, the side special isn't nearly as useful because they know to mix up options. They also might know how to tech the hit, adding even more defensive options for Ganon to cover. But the truth is that you can have a winning record in Smash without necessarily playing a strong opponent. 
That might seem like a dig against the whole community, but the truth is that lots of us play Smash for fun, as a hobby or a social activity. Not everyone's out here trying to win super majors and get sponsored, so in pools, we'll often see low to mid-level players duke it out. And what do you know? Ganon is legitimately better at beating weak players than most characters because he punishes bad habits and options harder than almost any other character. I guess that's kind of like his hobby, because he's a, a bully. Not only is Ganon good at punishing weaknesses, his own weaknesses take skill checks to punish. Ganon is weak off stage, easy to combo, and slow. Top players are great at abusing all of these faults, but even mid players can struggle with edge guarding, ledge trapping, keeping combos airtight, and using speed to bait moves. Let's take edge guarding Ganon as an example. To punish Ganon's recovery effectively, you're gonna need to be able to stage tech. That's because Ganon's recovery has a hitbox, and Ganon's aerials all hit super hard. So if you meet Ganon in the air and mistime your hit, he'll hit you. If you can tech the stage hit, you can bounce back and maybe even hit Ganon again. But if you can't tech the stage hit, all your effort bought you was a ticket to the blast zone. So, there's a skill check to punishing Ganon's recovery. Can you stage tech? Ganon's also pretty bad at the ledge. His weak jump and lack of range means he can't do a bunch to get off ledge. If you know good ledge trapping tools for your character and how to read ledge tendencies, then you can catch Ganon making mistakes. But if you don't and you rush to the ledge just to pressure Ganon, you might end up on the wrong side of a Ganon side. Now let's talk neutral. Ganon's lack of speed and huge weight means he's easy to whiff punish in combo. However, if you go blow to blow with Ganon in neutral, Ganon will usually win. To beat Ganon, you need to know how to put together a good long string so that you get a lot of damage off each neutral win. This is another skill check. Do you know your character's combos and strings? Pass these skill checks on your Smash fundamentals, and Ganon's more mini boss than final boss. Don't pass them, and Ganon feels less like Zelda and more like Dark Souls. There's a reason why Ganon thrived in the early meta and why Nairo hasn't been able to pull the Ganon trick a second time. It's because in the early meta, players had less time to work up their fundamentals and understand the matchup. In the early meta, players were a lot more likely to fail the skill checks Ganon put out. As the meta develops, most players get better at the basic fundamentals needed to punish Ganondorf. Ganon's hard punish style also thrives in an early meta where players underestimate him. Most characters will get a free hit or a free confirm if their opponent doesn't know the matchup. Ganon just hits a lot harder than most of the cast, so those free hits mean a lot more. Now, you can see what happens when Nairo tries to run Ganon into a player like Samsora. He might get a free stock when Samsora gets aggressive, but he'll also lose a stock off of one combo? A ledge trap into a grab? And an edge guard. So, a combination of a hard-to-punish playstyle, skill check weaknesses, and the early meta is why Ganon has a positive win rate, but rarely gets to top 32 at S-tier tournaments. As the meta develops, he might even drop below 50%, but he might just stay above it because of how on your game you've gotta be to beat a good Ganondorf. And he's still a top-tier character if you're playing casually. Seriously. Stand in the corner of a four-player free-for-all and charge a- Oh yeah! And you might win. Just don't expect that to work in bracket. What you can expect to work though is getting better at Smash from watching our channel. No, seriously, hit that subscribe button and you're going to have tons of videos in your inbox every week ready to keep you up to date on the competitive scene and helping get you ready to take on the pros.